Today we're going to be covering the Altest 7 Pro. In the box we have our download certificate, calibration sheets, uh, manual, things like that. Uh, the carrying case is included with the instrument. Uh, on the left-hand side here we have our Altest 7. Uh, the data communication cables, our white cable here for uploading and downloading tests to and from the software and the instrument. Our oil filter remover, which we use for spinning the shaft in our rotor stator health test. It's a dynamic test that we take. Uh, our black plug for uh, charging, our key dongle for license uh, within the software, and a couple sets of test leads. These are the larger test leads that actually come with our Altest 7. They are color-coded black, blue, and red, and our yellow one for ground. We do have a smaller set available as an option uh, that can be added at any point. We do recommend them. These are the ones that actually come on our uh, Altest uh, 34 instrument. And they provide a little bit more um, flexibility when you have different size leads that you need to connect to. Uh, and again, those are included with our Altest 34, not our 7. Uh, our Altest 34, if you're interested in that instrument, is designed for de-energized testing of three-phase AC uh, motors under 1,000 volts. We have a separate video covering that on our YouTube channel. Uh, but again, today we're going to be talking about the Altest 7 instrument itself. Um, so we're going we're gonna to get into the instrument a little bit. Um, on the actual uh, interface of the instrument, you have numbers, alphanumeric keys up on the top-hand side of the instrument. That's just for entering motor data when we save our tests. Um, and uh, in the top left corner is our on button. That's going to turn on the instrument. And once we first boot up, it's going to give us a warning just saying that we cannot connect to live power as this is a de-energized instrument. Uh, we do have energized testers, but this is not one of them. Um, we have our yellow ground plug, red, blue, and black uh, test leads, and our data communication cable uh, uh, port and our charging port on the side of the instrument itself. Down in the bottom, we have our OK key, uh, up and down, left and right toggles, and then the down arrow is actually our test key. On the interface, uh, we have a menu up on top. If I go all the way to the right, it's our power off. Our battery indicator is all the way on the right. Our settings menu. Uh, we have the ability to view and delete tests, set time and date. We also have some manual tests like our resistance um, in, in uh, induction tests. Uh, you can look at your serial number, firmware updates, uh, firmware versions, things like that. Um, and if I back out of here and get back to the main menu, uh, you can actually hold down the bottom arrows on the instrument to get back to the main menu. The INS test is our insulation ground test. It's a MAGR test. Um, that's just one individual test itself. Then our dynamic test is our uh, rotor stator health signature test. Again, that's an individual test. And then as we scroll over to the left from there, that is our uh, IND test. And that's for three-phase AC motors under 1,000 volts uh, uninstalled. So uncoupled motors where we have access to the shaft. Um, as we scroll down to our Z5 test, that's the one we're going to do today. Uh, that's designed for three-phase AC motors, uh, no matter what the voltage and horsepower is, that's, that, uh, that are installed. That's our installed test. Um, and that's going to be something that we're going to do in a bit here uh, once we actually get started taking a measurement um, on the instrument. Our next menu over is our uh, DC motor test. Uh, and then we have our manual test. So this will be for our single phase motors. Um, and we have a couple other uh, tests that we can do under that menu and our routing feature. So there's a route capability in both the 34 and the 7 uh, for creating a route on the database, bringing it in, in, into the instrument and uh, walking through a route, taking tests, whether they're spare motors or motors within the plant that you can connect to uh, at the drive, uh, at the motor leads or at the MCC bucket as long as they're de-energized. And then on the bottom right-hand corner is our communications to the computer. I'm not connected to the computer, so it's just going to be waiting. So that would be where we would uh, send our test to and from the instrument itself. All right, now we're actually going to walk through and take a test. Uh, again, here's our interface. We're going to go down to the z test. Again, this is for installed motors, three-phase Three-phase motors, you can do, do uh, transformers as well, but we're going to select the motor because we're actually going to test my demo motor here. Um, so I'm going to select motor and hit the OK button, and it's first going to tell me to connect the blue clip to phase two and yellow to frame ground. So I'm going to grab my leads and connect them into the top of the instrument, uh, blue into the blue, which is our phase two, and uh, yellow into frame ground. I will clamp these on the leads. Uh, make sure you take caution in connecting these to the leads. They need to be seated properly. Uh, to have proper contact with our clips, our leads themselves. Uh, so all I'm going to do here is hit the OK button and move forward on to our next menu. Our next menu is a dissipation factor and capacitance test. This is something that we uh, 
have as an indicator of early uh, contamination warnings. Um, so we're going to go through and we're going to select that test. This little light down in the bottom right hand corner is just telling us that it's in the middle of a measurement right now. Now, right now we have our dissipation factor, uh, which is up on top, and capacitance, which is measured in nanofarads. We're just simply looking for something outrageous, outlandish, uh, 200, 300 percent, or no reading, uh, out of range, something like that. We have our own internal alarms here that are set, so I'm just going to continue to hit OK and move on to the next menu, which is our insulation test. So this is the same as our Mager test. Uh, as a Mager test, excuse me. Um, so what we're going to do here is toggle between 500 volts and 1 kV. Um, I'm going to do this from 500, 500 volts. Uh, and all I'm going to do is hold the test key down until I get a stable reading. And again, that light is on. I hit the OK button and I save that measurement. Now it's going to ask me to connect the remaining leads, uh, black to phase one and red to phase three. I do have mine labeled on the motor just so uh, if I have anything that indicates an issue in one of the phases, I know which one to look for. Um, so I'm gonna connect these, and once I'm done with that, I'm gonna walk through and, uh, and hit the OK button once I'm done connecting. And now I'm in the middle of a measurement. So this is our static test uh, between phase three to two. It'll then jump to two to one and then one to three. So it's going to test individual phases on the instrument itself um, and output some results. Now the results that we're going to get on this last menu are going to be in OK, warnings, and bads. Um, just for quick diagnosis, again, those are internal alarms that are set um, proprietary to all tests. Uh, and, and again, we can get more value out of those results by looking at individual tests. So we'll have a resistance reading, an impedance, an inductance, a current frequency response, things like that. We can actually look at the results themselves and compare them between the phases. But if it's somebody that isn't an electrician or doesn't speak motor testing lingo and just wants to be able to take a really, really quick test on a motor, um, you know, you have okays, warnings, and bads to point you in the right direction. So right now we have okay up on top and resistance. I have contamination, insulation, phasing, everything shows up okay on here. Uh, so that's pointing to this being a good motor. Uh, if I tap on any one of these, I can hit okay, and I'm gonna look at my resistance reading in each phase, three to two, two to one, one to three, and then my deviation from average down on the bottom. And that's essentially what we're doing with the instrument is, is comparing the measurements between each phase in the motor. And as I scroll down to contamination, we saw our measurements in uh, dissipation factor and capacitance. Uh, everything checked out there. Insulation, we had 500, uh, 500 volts uh, tested at. And then we're down here to phase angle. And again, our deltas are down on the bottom. Current frequency response is our next measurement. And again, our deltas between the phases. So what I'm going to do here uh, is I'm going to go down and... and actually look down at the save and reference down at the bottom of the instrument. I'm going to store this as a good motor, and I'm actually going to take some results after this and, and compare them to the new one. So I have a save option, which is going to be very elaborate. It's going to ask for the model number, the manufacturer, uh, the horsepower, the voltage, you know, things like that. And I can store that as a, a detailed test that I can bring to the software. But for this one, I'm just going to do a save as a reference because I'm, going to, I'm actually going to take a test a little bit later here and compare it to the reference, which is our next, next mode down um, from this, this reading. So all I gotta do is name, name the motor. I'll just do a, you know, an A, B, C motor, and then I'll save it. I'm gonna hit go up to next and hit okay. And my motor data is saved as a reference. All right, so now we're going to do a second test on this motor. And what we're going to do is we're going to speed through here and get into my Z-Fi test. And I'm going to simulate right now that we, we took a baseline measurement. We stored that first reading as a reference. And what we're going to do is walk through this motor and, and run a test again and compare the values that we get in this motor test to our previous one. So I'm going to speed through this real quick because I've already shown you how to use the instrument, at least for the Z-Fi test, connect to my motor. And what I'm simulating here is that we had a motor that tripped the drive in the plant, and we're trying to know immediately, do we have a problem on the motor? Is it the motor? What is it in the motor? Uh, or is it something else that we need to look into? And I, by connecting either to the leads, to the drive, or the MCC bucket, and I walk through this test, 
I'm going to compare my measurements from this test to my past test, which is a baseline measurement uh, on a good motor, on the motor when it was good, when it was brand new coming from the supplier or the motor shop. And, uh, and we're going to compare the measurements between this test and the previous test. And we're going to use that uh, via our test value static number. That's our TVS value on the motor that we took earlier. And that number is a patented algorithm that all test has, which is a sum of of all the, the six electrical parameters that were taken on this instrument, and it's assigning a number. It's not good, bad, or indifferent. It's just a number. I think we had about 658 on our previous test um, for the motor. It doesn't really mean anything, but what we're looking for is a change in that number. And what we can do is compare same model, same manufacturer, and horsepower on a motor, whether it's the same motor or an identical motor, uh, and look for changes. And the changes are going to indicate something is changing electrically and indicating an early stage of a problem, or we can use it to eliminate false positives due to rotor position on an installed motor. Um, so as we walk through the test, we're going to compare our TVS value really quickly between our old test and our new test, and we're going to look for a change that is outside of 3% from our original number. So if it was 658, we want to look for something outside of 3% that's going to indicate we have a problem and we need to pull that motor immediately. So as I scroll through here, I have some okays. I do have some bads, so I know something's going on. I know that my new TVS is 716.13, so I don't know, you know exactly what that is in math terms. It's probably outside my, my 3%, but if I hit okay and I go to compare this test to my previous test, and I go to use my motor ABC that I saved earlier, and I use it, I know immediately that my TVS deviation is outside of 3%, and I have a bad motor. I need to replace that motor, put a new one in, and, and go from there. And in a matter of only a minute or two, I know that this motor is bad. Making a very quick decision is going to save a lot of money. Hey, folks, Eric Fritz with IE Technologies here. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give us a like or subscribe to our channel. If there's anything that we can help with, please visit our website, give us a call, or shoot us an email. We'd be happy to help.